To quickly sum up the entire science of a home, we examine the interactions of the four elements, heat bleed, airflow and pressure, moisture and air quality. Then make our three recommendations to tune the air tightness, insulation, and mechanicals. On the two critical systems of the home, skin and circulatory. And the one goal is control. We also like to call this tuning or balance, but the only way to prove you have achieved it is with testing. Same as with a baby. When a baby is born, if it looks cute, oh, that's so cool. But of course we test the baby's responsiveness. It's breathing, it's pulse rate and blood oxygen level to make sure everything's working as designed. Yes. Testing is the most important feature of building for performance and health. If you can describe exactly what you want to know, you can find or devise a way to test it. If you look at it this way, you can test literally anything invisible about a home. Yeah, but a simpler way to look at it is that any test targets at least one of the four elements, heat bleed, airflow and pressure, moisture, or air quality. And some of these tools measure more than one element. Hypothesis is great, but proof is better. Are we ready to complete the science and test our work? Yes, please. <laughs> when a house gets a full scope performance test between the enclosure, the skin, and the engines, the circulatory system, the one that always wins is the enclosure. So let's tackle that first. We start with the most important tool in the kit, the blower door. This is the blood pressure cuff for a house and it tells you so much about your home. But before we fire it up, we always run a quick thermal scan to see any subtle anomalies before they're drowned out by the effects of this giant fan. Corbett's looking for insulation problems, possible moisture issues or leaks, and ducts in the outside walls, which means no insulation in that spot. We're literally one minute into testing this home and we're faced with a radical truth about tools, which is that they're only as good as your technique when using them. This camera is amazing, but it is an idiot. It'll try hard to show me pretty colors all the time, regardless of what they mean. Yeah, even though today we have all these brilliant tools, you still have to practice with them to develop a craft if you're going to get the most out of them. Okay. Now we're ready to run the blower door. Remember in episode five, we got 310 CFM 50 at the rough stage of construction. And it looks like we got actually about 10% tighter and I'm pretty happy about that. All of the openings in the house, if you were to add up all the gaps and cracks are probably about as big as this window here. So while this blower door is very much like the blood pressure cuff, we're gonna take this house to the doctor now and do all of the vital checks, which are... In a zonal pressure test, we use a manometer and a hose to test all of the rooms. Because now that we know that there's a four by eight inch square hole in our house, we wanna make sure that that hole is not confined to just one room. And we wanna make sure that the number is around zero. So the number is not zero, but it's two. And that is much closer to zero than it is to 50. So if I had to put a percentage, it's about a 4% connection to the outside. This is the hatch that goes down into our crawl space. And we actually designed our crawl space to be 100% inside the house. So using this little test port, I'm going to see if this has the same number as the girls' room, and it does. Recessed cam lighting is usually a big cause of air leakage in homes. Now, we have lights that look like recessed cans, but they're not, but they are still penetrating the ceilings. So I'm gonna test these lights along with some outlets on exterior walls with a pressure pan, which is basically a zonal pressure test for things that don't have doors. Now that we're done testing the enclosure, it's time to test the HVAC. And this little beauty is a training tool that really helps you understand the complex, but not so complex way to test an HVAC system. When you look at it simply, what we're doing in the crawl space is we've got the air coming in, gets filtered, gets conditioned by our heat pump down there, and then goes into all of the network of octopus ducts that are the main trunk line and the branch lines that come out of that that go into each of our rooms. First thing that we wanna know is, is the blood pressure in our system what we designed it to be, meaning not too high so that our system has a heart attack. 
You can simply insert your static pressure probes before and after the heat pump down there. Then we can move further out and do what's called a static pressure map to know everything about the pressure in our system. We can also test the air flows coming out of each of the registers in the girls' room and in our bedroom and in the living room. And if we want to be really crazy about it, we can even go so far as to test the delivered conditioning capacity. That means the actual BTUs coming out of each of our registers and compare that to the design calculations that we did in the beginning with our manual J. You can know everything, and it kind of depends on how serious you want to be about getting it perfectly right, or if you want to build a pretty good house and get it in the neighborhood. I will tell you that you can go too far with this testing. So knowing that everything is working to your standards is what you're going for. Testing tools like this and large training props, well, you don't need to know how to do them yourself, but you definitely can find professionals out there who do know how to use them. So the ducted heating and cooling system, uh, we have the filter for right here. You can hear that it's running. And we want to know, big picture, what the whole system is pushing airflow-wise. There are multiple ways to test system airflow. Some of them are sexier and easier than others. You want to know this because if we don't know how much air is running through the system, then we have no way of diagnosing anything about it at all. So we are now measuring the airflow. I've got some tools in the crawl space right now. This thing is also wireless. And it looks like we have 855 CFM. You can see that we are basically exactly where we're supposed to be. Now, just because the HVAC system right now is working perfectly as designed, doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. We need to replace filters. And I waited until this thing was nice and juicy so that I could show you guys. This is a used filter, right? That color should be like this. We've got so much filtration in this house. We have six places where filters need to be replaced. And that is 13 total filters in this house that I am in charge of checking and replacing. Some of them only need to be replaced once a year. This is money well spent. If this stuff is in the filter, it is not in my children's lungs. Now, of course, the enclosure and the engines have to be tuned themselves, but they also need to be tuned together, which is really important in a high performance home like this one. So what we want to do next is measure the pressure inside with reference to outside with our pressure gauge. You can see the other end of this hose is outside. When we're at rest, all the windows and doors are shut to outside and there is no fan working in the house, the house should be no different than outside pressure-wise. When you start turning on the HVAC equipment, that's when you start to learn things. So this is the pressure when the ERV is kicked on. That's our balanced ventilation. I want my balanced ventilation to truly balance my home. So all I need to do is go down there and tweak a setting on the ERV systems to make sure that they are in fact bringing in as much air as they're sending out. So once we have fixed this and made this zero, then we also want to know what the one-way exhaust systems in this house are going to do. The only one-way fan in this house, aside from the radon fan, which is sucking on the ground underneath the house, is this kitchen exhaust hood right here. I just kicked the kitchen exhaust fan up to its maximum speed, which is about 600 CFM. You can see why makeup air is so important in an airtight house like this. Now, if we did not have the makeup air system, this fan alone would be enough to do about three blower door tests at the same time on this house. And we use this, of course, every single time we cook, even making a piece of toast. So this tells me that my family is going to be safe and that the house pressures are not going to start getting really wacky and doing strange things to the system of home performance. Everyone always says that on a build, you're going to go over time and over budget and make sure you build in some therapy sessions. I think all of those are true. <laughs> and But you can also trade off because you've got time and you've got money. Like an example that we used here, aside from the fact that we built 80% of this house ourselves, is the doors. You can buy a door that's made out of mahogany. Or, or you can take a pine door that's the cheapest one that you can get. You can still get pretty, like the ones that we have. And then you can try to make it look like it's mahogany, which I promise you takes a whole bunch of time that you just don't want to invest. I mean, it took us months to get all of the doors in here stained because I just did not want to spend my weekends doing that.
Sometimes DIY just needs to be a negotiation with yourself. 